you've got, DE Cosmic. All right, so uh, my name is DE Cosmic. Um, this is Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. Uh, with me, I have a couple other DMC vets. If you want to introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Maxi Lobes, Devil May Cry 1 runner. And I'm Wifey Runs, all of the Devil May Cry runner. Except Reboot. Yeah, that, not that one. <laughs> we don't talk about that one. <laughs> I do. I talk about that game a lot. Uh, so too much. This is uh, Devil May Cry 4. This game is sick and awesome, and I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, where are we at on the alternate costume incentive? You are safe to start as you are. Okay. They did not get a fancy costume. All right. All right. So, um, in three, two, one, Devil May Cry. So, starting off, we're playing as the new main character of the series, uh, Nero. He is a member of an order called Order of the Sword. And the game begins with a mysterious assassin taking out their leader, none other than the beloved Dante from the Devil May Cry series. So we're going to try and bust him up a little bit here. This first mission is basically a tutorial, but it also functions as a proper mission. And so he's going to be trying to beat the mission as fast as possible without taking damage, ideally. And he's just going to beat the heck out of Dante. That's the strap. There we go. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we have two types of currency in this game. We have Proud Souls and Red Orbs. And Proud Souls are used to pro buy only abilities. And red orbs are actually used to just buy items and like upgrade and like health and other stuff. We're gonna get into that. Uh, Waifu, if you wanna take over, yep. Yeah, so basically in other Devil May Cry games, that currency was all just one currency and you couldn't refund anything. But in Devil May Cry 4 specifically, you can refund stuff and you buy everything. Uh, you buy all the abilities with the Proud Souls and all of the items with the orbs. Enemies still drop orbs and the only way to get souls is from beating the mission. But you get a better rank, you get more souls, but the big one is beating the mission without taking any damage gives you a ton more proud souls. So the entire route of the whole game is predicated upon how many no damage missions you can get. So especially the first two, those are super important to no damage. Um, we already got the first one, so that's great. The second mission is a lot longer and also has a real boss fight that's not a tutorial at the end, and Cosmic's gonna be looking to no damage that so he can buy charge shot three. Um, he bought two things at the first shop here, speed, which just lets Nero run and book it like that. Um, and then he also bought charge shot, which is the attack he's doing in the air there with his gun. So what he does is he rebinds the shoot button to a trigger or an, something that he could hold all the time really easily. And then that charges up his charge shot and it glows on his arm and the different colors of glows indicate different levels of charge shot. Um, he can only have four level one at the start but it's still super useful. And Charge Shot 3 is absolutely busted. So he's gonna try to get Charge Shot 3 by Mission 3. Um, and in order to do that, he has to no damage the first two missions. So that's why it's so important. Yeah, and a lot of these enemies here, we're gonna really just be like grabbing them into a Charge Shot as well. But at the very end here, we're gonna be doing something a little different. We're gonna finally use the sword. Excuse me. No, we're not gonna actually, I lied. <laughs> Wait, never mind, here we go. All right. Now, Nero's sword is called the Red Queen, and it has a motorcycle engine in it. And if that wasn't cool enough for you, you can time the, the revs on it instantly to charge it up, and you get more attack speed as, more, as well as more attack damage, and that's super crucial to the run. Yeah, so it's like a, something like a seven or eight frame window yeah. but on every single swing that he can do in the whole game. And so optimally, he's timing a seven or eight frame trick every single time he swings the sword. And in the top left, of the screen, there is a little indicator by his health bar, and every time he hits it, it'll rev up and refill the meter right there. And the attacks will come out faster, so the timing is different, and every single attack in the game has a different timing. Um, most of the quick kills on small enemies and a lot of the damage output that you're doing on the bosses is going to be determined by how many of those exceeds you hit. Um, so on the first boss here, he's going to be trying to exceed every single hit, and he will do a ton more damage if he exceeds every single hit. Yeah, and the first boss is uh, Burial, also lovingly called the Fire Pony. Uh, and it has, he has a bunch of different attacks that you have to avoid. He has a huge like sword, and he ha can cause explosions in the ground. We're going to try and just hope that he doesn't do that next thing, but, you know, it's, it's not up to me, essentially. Yeah, he's got a multitude of attacks, and 
All of them are okay, except for two, which is like this big AoE that he does that centers off of him, and then he also spawns volcanoes that erupt out of the ground, very DMC1-esque. And the volcanoes are also really bad because they're just slow. The only really way to avoid it with the kit that the Cosmic's going to have right here is to run away. All right, here we go. First phase over. After this first phase, he's going to do a scripted AOE explosion, but then he can randomly do it after that. Um, you have to get out of his sphere to not get hit by that. And it's really important he just did it again. Um, it's really important that he doesn't get hit here because he really wants charge shot three. There we go. Oh, excuse me. I'm just going to let you reset, sir. Come here. Oh, scary. Oh, boy. I'm just getting out of this corner, dude. Excuse me, sir. All right, excellent. There yeah, we go. That was pretty scary. That, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that camera angle was so bad. Dude. Once he charges on you, it's like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> it's such a rare attack, too, that charge. All so, right. So, yeah, here you'll see at the end, uh, bottom left, no damage, no items. So he's going to get a bunch more Proud Souls. He's going to use that to buy Charge Shot 3 and Streak. And I think that's, that's it for this mission. Yeah. Um, All right, here we go. But, yeah, the, the buys are really cool. They're dynamic in this game because you can actually refund... Um, your abilities. In the other Devil May Cry games, you can't do that. Um, so, like, if he gets to a certain point and he needs Showdown, for instance, is a really expensive move, he can refund some moves he bought earlier and uh, be able to have Showdown still. And that actually makes the route a lot more dynamic. There's a lot more backup threats because you're not as committed to a single um, new ability as you might be in a different Devil May Cry game. So now we're going to go to uh, Hyrule Castle, uh, but, like, in wintertime. And we're going to experience an enemy that's returning from Devil May Cry 1. They're called the Frosts. And in this fight specifically, we're going to just try and plant the charge shots on them. This is the first instance where you're going to see charge shot 3 at work. It plants a bomb on the enemy, and then after a time, it does a delayed explosion. And you can use that for an extra launch as well. So we're going to turn the camera here so the other enemy behind this guy tries to make it on camera, but he can't queue up an attack. Where did he go? There he is. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, that's absolutely busted. This is like a really strong like mid-tier enemy, and he dies in one charge shot three. All right, there we go. Super and essential for trying to maintain the no damage, too. Mm -hmm, absolutely, because there's um, a, I guess, what is it? Like a strat in this game, basically, where you do this thing called off-targets. So you'll plant a bomb on an enemy, and it'll just be dead. Like, you'll just be able to ignore it, and you can, you can structure a lot of the way that you clear rooms in this game based on effectively having the number of enemies that you have to deal with by just planting Charge Shot 3 onto key enemies. Yeah, you place a Charge Shot 3 on an enemy and his name is in the death note. He's screwed. <laughs> you don't have to worry about him at all. You can focus on other enemies, which makes some of the combat clears really, really fast. Um, this is one of those rooms where that's going to be super essential. He shoots one, he knows it's dead. He can just ignore it. There we go. But Charge Shot's not only useful for combat. As you saw earlier, he was trying to do a little bit of a skip with it. And DMC4 has some of the sickest skips in DMC speedrunning. You're about to see one right here um, using some mechanics called inertia. It's basically what you know from real life. You know, objects in motion stay in motion, and Cosmic is zooming. <laughs> Very well done. And I believe that skip is actually called Helicopter Skip after the guy that found it. His name is Sky Viren. He was the one that christened it. Uh, long time runner of this game. He doesn't run it anymore, but shout outs to Sky for really laying the groundwork for a lot of what this game eventually became. Basically, if you are a normal person and you have no idea what just happened, uh, <laughs> what he did was he built momentum by doing a streak, which is like a forward slashing move off of the edge, like he's going to do right here. And there's a mechanic in this game called inertia. And so some moves build inertia, like the streak does. Some moves maintain it, and some moves uh, cancel it. But basically what he did is he kept the momentum from going forward by slashing in the air, and then he shot, and he flew backwards from the shot. And so he could chain um, staying in the air by slashing and then moving backwards by shooting and basically fly backwards through the air, skipping a whole platforming puzzle that you didn't see there because he just skipped it. We're just going to ignore what that item does for a second. We'll talk about that later. 
Here's another fight where you're going to plant a charge shot on this guy right here, and then take out this dude, grab this guy, bust him up, plant this one on this guy right here. That dude's just watching. He is. He just beat up his friends. He's just tap dancing. <laughs> and pretty much fight's over now. Nice. Yeah, so he mentioned the, using the sword to kill instead of charge shot earlier. That's because the death animation, if something dies to a charge shot, especially the scarecrows, is a lot longer. So the last enemy in the room he's going to try to kill with the sword instead of charge shot. So you charge shot's really good, but it's also kind of slow sometimes. All right, that guy should be gone. Yep. Also, charge shot three has the bomb property. And um, if you do enough damage that the enemy was going to die before the bomb's supposed to go off, then the enemy will just explode from the bomb. So that's Free another up. no damage mission right there. Yeah, so that last room more. was so yep. clean. Mm -hmm. So clean. All right, so now the next moves that we're going to buy are going to be a little more like utility heavy. Some of it's like damage, but first one is called Roulette Spin. It is a delayed combo in the air that you can do for a couple extra hits, and it'll also pop enemies up higher into the air. And then the second one is Devil Bringer 2 or Snatch 2. Um, and it basically just lengthens the uh, range of our grab. Now we have to get into the Beyblades. I don't want to talk about these things. So, Trent, can you take it? Oh, my gosh. Why? Can we just ignore <laughs> them? Can we just pretend they don't exist? I mean, we could, but, like... So, basically, the, the Gyro Blades are these big spinning tops that are in this game. And you have, to, <laughs> you have to... They're a puzzle element. Uh, you them. have to shoot them around at enemies and use them to solve puzzles and stuff. And the actual puzzles that we're going to get into with them right now... Uh, so you can use the sword to power them up a little bit. You have to activate them with the grab. And we're going to take out this sarcophagus here for later. But basically, now what's going to happen is we, in order to get into the boss room, we need to place four gyro blades onto four different platforms. And normally what you would do, and this is what I did in my casual playthrough too, is you, you took this gyro to the end of the room here, and then you, there's a third gyro down the way, and then you have to bring both of them back, or so we thought. You only have to bring, actually, the one that you retrieved back. So we're going to just bust open this door here. Yeah, the other one teleports back, thankfully, so you don't have to bring them both back. Saves a little bit of time. You should also probably talk, you, you upgraded Nero's arm. Nero has, his whole gimmick, essentially, is that his right arm is like a demon arm. It's, like, super-powered, um, and... His whole playstyle circles around that. So he has these big grabs, and he can do them on bosses when weak points are opened and stuff to do massive damage. Um, but he can also um, grab big enemies and pull himself towards them, and grab small enemies and bring them towards him. And so what he upgraded is his ability to grab a further distance, which is going to make the boss fight here a lot easier. So he can close the distance without having to worry about getting hit. That guy should be dead now. Name in the death note. All right, there we go. Nice. So now we're going to do one last puzzle here with the uh, the gyros. Uh, there's a fireball that's going down this hallway, and in order to repel it, you need to use the gyro blade to knock down the small magic wall here at the very end. It's not very explained. I don't, <laughs> I don't never get Never seen it. again, but... Yeah, never again. It's, high, it's protecting the secret mission. Now we're going to take out this line of enemies, and here's a one where we can use the gyro blade again to attack the enemies. So they're all going to be spawning in, and we'll just do that on them. Excuse me. So we're coming up on the frog boss fight. Probably a fun time to talk about that. The frog is the worst boss in the game, except for all the other worst <laughs> bosses in the game. <laughs> and uh, the reason he's the worst boss in the game is because he's got completely random openers, and some of the openers really suck. You want to kill him in one cycle before he can run away. He has this attack where he like makes the arena dark and hides, and then he has these little... Rasulka things, uh, little dangly bits on its forehead that are supposed to distract you. Um, and you have to beat those up before the boss comes back out again. But hopefully, Cosmic will just punch him in the forehead so hard that he can't run away. <laughs> hopefully. Well, there's a couple of attacks that we can get here. So, let's see. So first, we gotta get the... Uh, gotta take these enemies down. Alright, so now he's gonna come on out. What's up? All right, excellent. That's a good opener. Yeah, 
And boss down. Yo, let's go. Great fight. And then we're going to drop kick the door. <laughs> I love that move. It's so good. It's incredible. All right. So now we're working we're working with some cash right now. So we're going to we're going to buy a bunch of stuff. We're going to buy like three new moves. Yeah, you're cooking the gas. Time. And a lot of other Devil May Cry runs, a lot of the routing focuses around what items you're going to buy. But in this game, it's all about the abilities. Um, so here he's buying Air Hike, which lets him double jump. Uh, but you bought Split. Did you buy Caliber too? Yeah, I bought Caliber. You bought Caliber too, which is like a stinger or like a streak, but in the air. You know, all sorts of aerial movement options, which are going to be super useful later. Um, because that was not the last inertia skip you saw. That was just a little taste. That was a phenomenal cycle. Yeah, we just took their lunch money. <laughs> It's, it's actually pretty phenomenal, like, how many cool moves they added in this game compared to, like, previous titles. Yeah, and it's Near. sick that you actually use them in the speedruns. Right, yeah, and, like, exactly. DMC3 is like, buy a stinger, money round, done. <laughs> done, yeah, yeah. Like... yeah. No, they, they really nailed it with, uh, with Nero's abilities in this game. Oh, you got okay, robbed. yeah, we just got robbed. The general right. suck. There we go. And now we're just going to do this right here and grab another Holy Water. Again, we'll just ignore that. We'll get into it a little bit later. And right here, I'm actually canceling the recovery of the grab. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Oh, come on. You could afford some damages. I could, but, like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not stylish. Not or fast. So. so I'm actually co canceling the recovery of the grab there by just, like, doing a manual rev of Nero's sword. And it allows me to just do, like, rapid grabs on those enemies in order to just take down their cloak. Yeah, and you might be thinking, if you haven't seen this game, but you've maybe played another Devil May Cry, where's Dante? I got scammed. We all thought the same thing when we first played the game, but he is actually in it. We just play as him just over halfway through. Um, and thankfully, the money transfers over between characters. So him playing super well in this early game and getting all these no damages is also going to make the Dante sections way easier later. So it right, so runs really momentum-based. He's setting himself up really good for late game. All right, so excuse me, sir. Nice, okay. Goodbye. Okay, he's good now. All right. So we should be set up for no damage on this, unless this guy in this hallway decides to hit me for once. Nope. He's not going to do nothing. All right. So this chandelier here is now going to activate from an item that we got earlier, and then we're just going to knock it into the picture of the leader of the, Holy, of the Order of the Sword, and then we're going to go down to the next mission. And this is where we get into the best boss in the game, which is a window. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just pump out the Windex, I guess, or something. The physical manifestation of Windows 8. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember what I was going to say now. Because it's just a window, dude. Like, it's <laughs> right there. That's like. the boss. <laughs> and there's uh, a mini game on this level, too. This True. But first, got to fight some fish. I know everybody likes their fishing mini games, and this is about as close as DMC4 gets. So these guys are gonna come out. We're gonna hit them all. That one was supposed to get hit. Dude, you got didn't. scammed. That's like one of the coolest cycles in the game. Yeah, right. Okay, anyway. This guy's gonna die, though. So, a little lore uh, there's this character named Agnes who works for the Order of the Sword. Um, he is combining demons with stuff to make demons. I mean, I, you could have just left it at that. I mean, when I say it out loud, it sounds stupid. But I guess he obviously never said it out loud because he would have thought it looked stupid. Speaking of stupid, this puzzle. Um, yeah. The way, the, the way this puzzle works is it's supposed to be a dice game, and you think that, like, it's random, but the dice actually goes by a set pattern of 1, 4, 2, 6, 3, 5 on the top of it. And as long as you use your sword or Nero's grab in order to get the dice it will always land on the number that's on the top of the die. So then we can just bypass this whole room and it only takes like a minute and there's just no RNG to it. Yeah, normally when you're playing through this, if you don't know that, you just hit the dice, it lands on something random in quotation marks, and then if you land on the red spots, you gotta fight enemies, you land on the blue spots, you get free money. It's gambling, essentially. Essentially, yeah. I mean, this is not CSGO, so yeah. we're not gambling. We're trying to it's kind of fitting considering a lot of um, Nero's moves are named after like like high, like high roller and stuff Yeah, he's like got that, all this, you know? this gambling aesthetic going on. And speaking of gambling, this boss fight is not only bad, but also random. <laughs> so the, he's going to be throwing swords at the window. XP. Wait, no, Windows 8. We like XP. But yeah, the damage that the swords do is random. 
So, you know. All right. All right. Let's, uh, okay, now they're going to spawn back in. Excellent. And so Agnes here, who is hiding behind the window, not only does he spawn these enemies at you, but he'll also, like, randomly electrocute the entire room, and if the swords could just get grabbed, that would be excellent. Yeah. Surely you won't no damage Mission 7. It's, like, impossible. Okay, uh, there, there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's really hard to no damage this mission just because of so many hazards in it. Can I? Can you? Can you all please just? Thank you. Also, the the damage that these swords do to the window is also random, random, and it's also frame rate dependent. And because we're playing on 120, it's actually less. You roll like lower numbers at higher um, higher frame rates, dude. This game is full of amazing boss fights, and this is not one of them. Okay, hold up. Here you we said go. the frog was the worst boss. I'm going to say that a lot. This is <laughs> the worst boss. So far. So, it so gets far. Better. Okay, all right. True. All right. We're almost done. Come on, dude. That being said, it also has the best boss in video games. So. That's true. That's that's fair. But you only find him once. You find like all the other bosses like three times. But, you know. Can you all just please? Oh, my goodness. Please don't die to the window, Cosmo. No. I'm begging you. Okay. Excellent. There we go. Almost got hit. Nice. <laughs> so now we're going to move on to fighting some more Angelos, but now we have the power of Devil Trigger. So Nero got a sword, and uh, it's a katana. It's pretty powerful. And it allows him to get a JoJo stand in order to enhance his attacks. He read the final chapter of One Piece. He's unlocked the powers. He's got the goods on the JoJo Lambs updates, dude. Yeah. But basically, Devil Trigger makes you take less damage. You regenerate health. All of your attacks do more damage, and you kind of have super armor. Nero's is unique, where he has, like, this big animation that plays, and it can basically... It's a universal cancel. You can cancel anything. Taking damage, any attack. Um, so it's super useful. It also has invincibility frames, um, and you can buffer attacks out of it and stuff. So it's... Just universally useful. You have to have at least three of those little blue things filled in the bottom left. We're going to upgrade to get more of those later. Um, but once you have three of those filled, you can uh, you can use it whenever you want. Um, you get it from killing enemies, from taking damage, from taunting, which you won't see that much of in this run, but there will be a little bit of taunting later on. Oh, that guy exploded. I heard that in my right ear. Also, it slightly changes the animations of all of your buster grabs. So if you're in DT and you do a buster grab, it's a little bit extra. Usually you hit an extra time or you fly with the Angelos instead of throwing them. And uh, with that being said, I think we're coming up on our first bit of filler time in the run, so we got time for some donations. Alrighty, here's five dollars from Misu the Witch. Always a pleasure to see Cosmic showing off his finesse, this time with DMC4. I know that he will crush this run, just like SGDQ will crush it for Doctors Without Borders throughout this entire week. The Witch is always rooting for you, Cosmic. Run, DMC! Yo, much love, Misu. We got time for some more. Five dollars here from Gordon. Simply says, Devil May Cry, me beloved. $50 here from Corrosive Frost, a DMC run on SGDQ opening night. Jackpot! Probably got time for like two more. Alrighty, $10 here from Slickify. I wanted to be the one to fill your dark soul with hype! Hype! hype. Thank you. And $25 here from Lethal Placebo. Glad to see my favorite speedrunner running the best DMC game. Good luck, Cosmic! Thank you, much love, Placebo. All right, so now we're not going to be going on to the next mission. We're actually going to be doing something a little different where we're going to go back to the mission menu. And we've been playing on a mode called Turbo, which makes the game run 20% faster. And we're actually going to turn it off for this mission. But and that's slow. You would think. And this menuing is slow because there's a lot of menu delay. But besides that, <laughs> um, this actually allows us to do a skip that's only possible at 120 FPS with Nero and with Turbo off, because Turbo changes the way that physics work in this game, because more physics happen in, like, less frames. It's, it's very strange. But you're going to know it when you see it. So 
first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into this ruined church and we're going to be introduced to these enemies called chimeras. And chimeras are like little parasite things that will attach onto a host and can attack while in hit stun. They'll cause like blades to pop off of the enemy uh, while they're in hit stun. And, but we're just going to do away with them with uh, some double trigger grabs and some charge shot three. So first of all, this room is Sweet. set. And then we're going to be right up here. And now, lots of cool inertia movement tech in this level. All right, so here we go. Now we got to do the setup. We got to stand on a very weird spot here, and then we're going to skip down to the boss. Just trust me. Yeah, so this entire level kind of backtracks around to this section. Um, but by playing at 120 FPS with turbo off, you can stand at like the corner of this object that's supposed to take you to the next area, and it'll land you like semi out of bounds. And then you can yep, jump out of bounds and do that inertia movement to fly to the end of the level, basically. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we just skipped like three rooms and like a whole fight, and we skipped doing a gyro blade, and that's the best part. That's, that's the, best the real part for victory sure, yeah. here. So now we're going to go ahead and buy an ability called Trigger Heart, which is going to increase the amount of time that we can spend in Devil Trigger. And then we're going to refill our Devil Trigger gauge with some purple orbs. Now we're going to go into a fight called Echidna. And we're going to plant a charge shot on her at the very beginning and then force her into a state where she, like, gets sprouted up. She's like a she-viper, like, sort of poison ivy type looking thing. She's not going to get to play the game. Oh, of course she's just going to do this on SGDQ. Okay, you she's getting to play the game. I, I you didn't do this the last two months. What are you doing? She's trolling. It's true. That's called right. trolling. All right, so here we go. Now she's going to do it. Thank you so much. All right, cool. Now we're going to pull out the Weed Whacker and the JoJo references. Thank you, whoever did that. <laughs> <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> Basically, with that grab, you can just you can just hit the L2 button, which is the exceed button, over and over and over again, and Nero will continually rev the motorcycle engine into Echidna and just cause additional damage. And you can do up to three bars of damage with that in Devil Trigger. Now, uh, by the way, even with doing all this menuing and having to play in non-turbo, that still saves about a minute. Yeah. Do the level like slow like that. Unfortunately, you got to play DMC5 on PC for a mission. <laughs> but, then, but then you get to go back to Turbo. So now we're going to get into Mission 8. And uh, Mission 8's an interesting level because we do like one fight and then we do a puzzle that's also scripted. Um, and then we go and do another boss fight, which is the best boss fight in video games. Um, we have time for a couple of donations, though. Absolutely. Here's $20 from Unintended Chaos. I got up before 6 a.m. on a public holiday to watch the person who properly got me into speedrunning and running my favorite speed game. Good luck, Cosmic, and shout-outs to the whole DMC community. You're all amazing. Hey, much love, Chaos. Jimmy S. with $25 donation. Can't think of a better game to close out the first day of SGDQ. Good luck to all the runners, and let's hit that first million as fast as possible. You got time for one more. Alrighty, twenty dollars here from Steve. First ever time watching DMC4. Shout out to my dog on the couch. Please pet the good doggo for us. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go into the puzzle here, um, and the puzzle is called like I forget the forest of is it like the forest of illusions or something? I don't know. It's a forest, and the, basically the way this works is that the game wants you to run in the opposite direction of the shadows. So the shadows are now pointing back this way, and we're just going to run on ahead. And you have to do this like three times, and you just run in the opposite direction of the shadows, and it's always the same every time. Pretty oh. sure I turned my console off the first time I did this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a super simple puzzle, but I, you know, when I played this, I probably couldn't read. Still can't, but <laughs> back then I couldn't read, so. All right, so now we're going to get into Credo, and Credo is basically like... He's called Credo Angelo, and he's basically Nero's foster brother. Um, they grew up together and everything, but it turns out that Credo believes kind of in what the, the cult of the Order of the Sword is selling. And Credo, and Nero like doesn't want to fight him, but Credo is like, no, you're a demon, you have a demon arm and all this stuff. And 
Nero's like, I don't really want to fight you, though. And then Credo just makes him fight him anyway. So we're going to have to set up this move called Showdown by doing a couple of different stuns on Credo where he's going to slam his sword down. And then we're going to activate Devil Trigger and then hit him with like a flurry of yeah, aura auras. Sh showdown is a move that you can only do while in Devil Trigger, but it has an insanely long wind up. So you can only do it in really specific circumstances, like right now. And so the Credo boss fight's all about setting up the stun so you can do the showdown. Um, and him doing this spear throw and then parrying is the perfect setup. This one, he's a little far away, so he's not going to be able to do it. He's going to show off. That one is right. That's going to whiff, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that one's a whiff. That's fine. That's just more... There you go. That one's confusing. Oh, wait. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, that is. All right, there we go. Yeah, yeah, nice. I wasn't sure. There we go. Sick. There's like seven different ways to set up showdown. Um, but, you know, the boss could still troll you. And now he's down. Cool. Nice. All right. So now we're going to be introduced to formations of Angelos. And Angelos operate in formations of three. One gold and two blue. And there's certain attacks that they have that we can look out for. This first batch, we're not going to do that. But the second batch, we will. We're also going to purchase a bunch of extra abilities here. We're going to get roulette spin back because we actually sacrificed it in order to get showdown there. But we're going to get um, exceed two and three. And that's going to allow us to use exceed two and three moves. Um, funnily enough. And so the first fight here, we're going to actually turn the camera around, and then the Gold Angelo is always going to come to us. We're going to do Zangief's Spinning Pile Driver from Street Fighter IV. And then we're going to pop a charge shot on this guy, and he should be gone. There he goes. What came out first, Street Fighter IV or this game? Uh, actually, you know what? You might it be might right. be Nero's. It might be Nero's. I think Nero in Street that. Fighter IV. Yeah, because no, oh yeah, because this was 2008 and Street Fighter was 2009. Yep. There we go. Nice. The lore. Street Fighter Four <laughs> the was lore. also 2008. <laughs> Zangief in DMC universe confirmed. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna he head on over to here, and we're gonna. There's an extra Angelo in this room, so we're gonna take him out, so that now there's gonna be a formation of three. And we're gonna stand in the middle of the room here in order to manipulate the camera, so that we get a an attack where the Angelos will actually just shoot out a giant orb. Yeah, we're looking, anyway. we're looking for the ball attack here. We're looking for balls. All right, here we go. There it is. Nice. Oh, I did oh, it too I early. Sick. You agree. All right. Just don't use your DT. I always True. forget about that. Yep. Okay. He needs a double trigger for a skip in the next room, so he can't use it to kill the enemies fast. Um, they did the ball attack, which is awesome. It's great RNG. Um, and he does the charge shot to reflect the ball and instantly kill everyone in the room. Unless you get 120 FPS memed and then just don't die. Um, <laughs> that didn't happen. He just shot too early that time, but it happens. He cleaned it up. All good. Yep. So now here's going to be another skip where we're going to just skip an entire fight that's on this elevator and then go to the next fight. And yeah, I'll just let it kind of speak for itself. This is sick, yo. Oh, okay. Hold on. Nope, that's not good. We want a wall hike here. We don't want to double jump like that. You there we it. go. Nice. Clean. Getting through that laser as well. Hey, look, they're dead. Nice. That was also sick. This game is <laughs> this sick. This game is so sick. Cosmic dude. is sick. Maxi's sick. <laughs> I'm sick. You're this sick. event is sick. And smoking, apparently. True. All right. So now that those guys are down, now we're going to activate another time slow here. And we're going to go into this room where there's three enemies. And we're going to use Devil Trigger in the middle here. And then plop them all on the ground and then take them out. And they're good. And we got time for a couple of donations. Here's $25 from our favorite friend, Anonymous. Three of my favorite runners on the stage at the same time. Awesome. I would say good luck to DE Cosmic, but we all know he doesn't need it. Cheers to a great run. All right. So now here we got Agnes coming up. And basically... Not the window. Not the window. This is actual Agnes. He's now turned into a bug, so we're going to get out the raid. You know, I never thought about it that way, but like, he was a window and now he's a bug. 
It just kind of makes sense. Be the change you want to see in the world. It's about to get spiked. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to try and avoid a health threshold where he'll summon these fish that he created. All right, there we go. So now these guys are out. We're going to take these out. All right. We didn't get it. All right, that's fine. The we're going to stay up here, back. dude. All right, there we go. And then he now he's stunned anyway, though, so we're just going to do this. Yeah, boss. Goodbye. Give him the works. Uh, uh, uh. And he's down. Back to being a window. <laughs> Back to being a window. All right, so this next mission is another real pretty quick one because we have like one fight and then we got to go through a laser hallway that's reminiscent of like RE4. And then we go and fight another boss, which is going to be Dante again. Uh, however, we're going to get introduced to these Mephistos and Fausts. They are the cloaked enemies again. But the Faust is kind of the new thing here. It's like sort of the leader of this formation of cloaked enemies. Excuse me, sir. Oh, that sucks. You got scanned with the charge shot, too. It exploded yeah, right. in the wall. Oh, it's exploded in the wall. That was what happened? Okay. Yeah. Fun. Um, the best part about these enemies is they fly out of bounds. And as any gamer knows, that is quite possibly the best mechanic an enemy can have. Is the ability to run doing, away. What are you doing, dude? <laughs> what are you... Are you shy? He's shy. Can you come over here? That was rude. I didn't say come over here that fast. All right, anyway. All right, excellent, thank you. Appreciate you. So now, we got time for a couple of donations. All righty, here's $50 from Crimson Decoded. While it wasn't the first I played or beat, DMC4 is the first one in the series that I owned. What's everyone's favorite DMC double arm? Mine was Cerberus for a while, but after DMC4, it's got to be Pandora. I'm going to go with Beowulf. Oh, that's such a good pick. I know. Yeah. I like Nevin. <laughs> It sucks, Evan's but it's fine. also the best. It's great. <laughs> it's it's really hard. cool, yeah. yeah. It's just like DMC4. That's true. All right, here we go. Let's get through here. And now we're going to go through it. Laser hallway. You got time for another one. All righty, here's five dollars from Fall of Autumn. If DE Cosmic was one of Dante's styles, he'd be Pun Slinger. <laughs> <So. laughs> That's, that's more true than you that might That is know. facts, dude. That's, that is facts. <laughs> I'm, I'm chilling with this guy for a week. I'll tell you, I'm all punned out by the end of it. I'm already punned out. Here's a big skip, by the way. So normally we would have to go down into this big pit and fight some enemies, but we're just not going to do that. That sounds kind of slow. It is a little bit. This looks a lot faster. Excellent. Now we're on the other side. So now we're going to go and fight Dante, and this is going to be changed a little bit from how we saw him on mission one. We've got a lot more tools now, so we're really looking to plant a charge shot on him and then use the launch from that that we get in order to do another chain, like a series of chain grabs. Dante's also got a lot more tools too, though, mm -hmm. so he can troll you, but Cosmic's got this. Here we go. Let's see what he gives me. Oh, interesting. All right. Interesting. All right. Come here. Okay, fine. Be like that. He was supposed to, like, actually pop up from the second grab that I did, but that didn't happen. Okay, he's dead. There we go. That was really weird. Like, he was supposed to just, like, bounce back up, and then I could plant a charge shot on him, but he just kind of sank to the nah, ground. Nah, slam dunked him in the <laughs> <I> dude. <laughs> he took that personally. All right, so mission 11 here. This is going to actually be the last of the Nero missions for a little bit. Um, oh. There's another, there's a, a skip here that's going to skip a fight on the other side. Normally, you would go over to the left and activate a light wheel that would bring you up to the fight, but, again, we're just going to kind of, like, not do that. And there we are on top of the elevator. And now what we're going to be doing is 
We're going to be setting up for another like fight of the three Angelos, but we're not going to be looking for the orb to come out or the ball. Um, we're just going to kind of kill them where they stand. And then we're going to be heading into another boss fight. This thing right here. Yeah, the boss fight for this level is like actually the Pope of this cult yep. that uh, Credo is a part of, who Dante, coincidentally, shot in the face right at the start of the game. But now he's back and he's yeah. got like demonic power and stuff. Yep. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So first we're going to like plan a charge shot on this guy. That guy's going to fly away, which is totally intentional. <laughs> this is actually how this fight is supposed to go. That's RNG manipulation for the boss fight. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you. And we're just going to drop this, kick this guy. See ya. Ooh. Come on, thank you. All right, so now we're going to go and head into the fight against Agnes. And he's got two phases to him. And we're gonna, we want to get him through phase one as quickly as possible in one sort of set of attacks. So here we go. Time to beat up an old man. The Devil May Cry 4 pastime. All right, that should be good. That was good. It's really important there that he managed his DT so that he was still in Devil Trigger when he did the Buster, so that it does extra damage. And right out of this cutscene, he'll be able to move a little bit and then instantly parry this giant attack, which will immediately make the old man go, <laughs> and, and he should be down now. now. Yeah, he should die now. And should be it. Nero, please. Come on, don't talk like that. All right, there we go. Now we're on to the Dante sections. Dude, that finisher is so sick. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> the best is like when you're in demon form and he says, you're the demon, not me. And it's just like, dude, like, what are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're moving into the Dante sections, my man. Uh, we're going to do a lot of shopping right now because like Waifu mentioned earlier, uh, all the currency that we've built up with Nero is going to carry over to Dante. So if you want to go down the buy list there, the, the grocery list. Yeah, so of course the classic Stinger, Maxi's favorite. And then we're also, um, in this game, you buy the styles to upgrade them. So we're getting Swordmaster level 4, um, uh, Trickster level 3. Um, unfortunately, no Rail Guard upgrading. DMC 3 fans crying. Um, but, <laughs> you know, and Charge Shot for Ebony and Ivory. Um, in this game, Dante has all of his styles at the same time, which is phenomenal if you have three hands. Um, but if you don't, then it just makes the game really hard to play. But also, really fun. And we're going to actually start off with like a small little mini skip here as well, after we just use the holy water on those guys, which is like just a giant AoE of damage. All right, there we go. That's just going to skip a fight there. Nice little mini skip. Farm some orbs. Farm some orbs, go do more grocery shopping, you know. Pretty much at this point in the run, the Proud Souls, what you use to buy abilities is pretty much you're good to go. Yeah. Um, but Dante specifically is going to be used to farm those orb ores that you saw him using the prop shredder attack on. Um, because Dante is phenomenal if you're trying to fly around the room at a million miles an hour and gain a bunch of style. If you're trying to kill stuff, he kind of sucks in this game, actually. <laughs> so he's going to use a lot of his orbs to buy holy waters that he's going to use to kill enemies and bosses faster. Because Nero, I mean, he's got tactical nuke, 24 kill streak on his gun at any time, but Dante's got some dashing moves. That's that utility, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now in this room, uh, this is actually still one of like the only orbs that we look for in the run still. Uh, and we're going to set this up by using this move called Drive, where Dante's going to charge the sword and then get some like shock waves that come out of it. That guy should go down, and then we're going to whip out the, the gat on that guy, and he's going to be done. And again, we're going to try and manipulate the camera because these enemies will only do these attacks in certain parts of the room. So we just kind of want that to happen anytime. There you nice, go. Nice, there we go. Nice, nice. there we go. It, now they're just nice. down. Nice. Orb. Or we were so close. 
And that's the end of the first Dante mission there, because we're just going to walk across this bridge now. Oh, and if it wasn't obvious, that was also the uh, classic Capcom escape with too much time <laughs> on the timer. Got like 10 minutes to do a three-minute section. And they fixed that in 4Make. RE4 Remake. True. That's true. True. This is also like going to be Maxi's favorite part of the run, because we're just going to dot it up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, thankfully, Stinger is not actually the fastest way to move in this game, unless it's Devil Trigger <laughs> Stinger. So you just sprint everywhere instead of having to die everywhere. But, I mean, it's kind of kind of miss it. A little kinda, bit. Kind of a little bit. The speed ability is just quality of life, though. Yeah, and they actually made it so that in this version of the game, it activates um, a lot quicker because in vanilla DMC4, um, it used to have to take like 10 steps in order to activate speed, but in this game, out of combat, it's only two steps. It was a huge quality of life upgrade for the run, as well as in like, in vanilla DMC4, Nero could not carry charge shot across rooms, so you just had to like manually charge it every time you entered a room. So moving into this mission, uh, this is, as you might have noticed, we're kind of entering some familiar territory. Uh, and this is because the budget for this game was not great. So in an interview with uh, the director, Hideaki Itsuno, uh, he said that they received the same budget to make this game as they did for DMC3. And so not only were they working with, um, you know, new tech and like a new engine and everything, so it, was, it was pretty hard to develop um, and like do all of this on, on that same budget. So they really focused on a lot of the combat mechanics and they basically just kind of folded the level design in half in order to make sure that they could spend the majority of the time developing the game uh, and polishing like a combat system that they would be proud of and that people would enjoy you know, to this day. And they did a, an incredible job of that given the limitations that they had. So Yeah, but like any good quesadilla, it is folded in half. So you know, Dante's <laughs> levels are just Nero's levels, but backwards. But backwards. Um, and with worse enemies. Uh, in this level in particular, he's going to be fighting uh, Chimerid Assaults. Chimera you talked about a little bit earlier. It's like these little bug things that attach themselves to other enemies and have random attacks that are only stopped by shooting them. Um, but in normal combat, it's really hard to tell when they're going to attack. So it just kind of feels random. Like you're comboing an enemy and then all of a sudden you just get randomly hit out of the combo. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, is, are there faults on this level too? No, there's, fortunately they're only on mission 14. Okay. The next one. The next one. Yeah, so we got a reprieve of one level from the fault. We'll see him in a bit. We're going to do this puzzle again here, too. This is different from Nero's levels, or from Nero's um, puzzle, but it's still the same every time you do it. And then we're going to head back into fighting uh, the Sheep Viper, because Dante is basically just cleaning up what Nero couldn't do. So here we go. Let's see if she actually cooperates. Oh, never mind. Hold up. I don't think she's going to do it. Okay, yeah, she did it. All right, that's cool. I was on the wrong gun. It's all right. But we're going to do this. Whoa, Royal Guard used. Yep. DMC3 mentioned. And now she's going to go up into the flower form here. And we're going to use Prop Shredder again, this little pinwheel move in order to stun her. This is what we're working with with Dante right now. This is what we've got. Spin to win. And then she just doesn't... I don't know what is up with you, Echidna. So as you can see, Dante has a bunch of tools, but his tools aren't the best. And in new game, especially at this point in the run, like, you got one sword, you got four styles, but you can't do much with them. And uh, you got two guns. He just doesn't do nearly as much damage output. Um, oh, there's the holy water. But now he will do an insane amount of damage output that he's got Gilgamesh, the gauntlets. Yeah, and Gilgamesh has a mechanic called distortion. So basically in this game, Dante has two models. He has his human model, and then he has his devil trigger model. And because MT Framework requires those models to overlap when you're changing between forms, there's, you can create instances of double damage um, during active frames of move by activating devil trigger during them. Um, and you can do this like multiple times during some moves, and it creates multiple instances of double damage, and you just you just chuck out damage. Um, if you want to talk about the faults, waifu or Maxi, it's fine. Um, so you faults, for it. you see that that uh, starfish coming out of the ground? Possibly the scariest thing ever. Horror games have nothing on this thing. Uh, they infinitely respawn in every room. There's multiple of them in every room. He just killed one. Doesn't matter. It's coming back in like two seconds. 
Um, if they grab you, they take you out of the current combat encounter and into an additional combat encounter that has random enemies. Once you beat that combat encounter, you then restart the combat encounter that you're currently in. So if Cosmic were to get hit and then fall into a fault here, or do one of his new Gilgamesh attacks that has an insane amount of wind-up and isn't really cancelable and gets caught by a fault, then he has to do an entirely new room of combat and then redo the whole room he's in right now. So it's an insane amount of time loss to get caught by one of those. And because Dante's only good damage output is doing stuff like the Sword of Real Impacts, like you just saw there, um, that have a really long wind-up, it's really, really scary. Um, so this level in particular is all about just like don't get faulted. And that's like a common thing in a lot of Devil May Cry games where you get pulled into an additional fight. I mean, it's in Devil May Cry 1, it's in Devil May Cry 3, it's in this yeah. game. But they just changed it so that it's in the form of an enemy attack this time. Which I guess is more interesting, but still kind of sucks. It's also like just the actual worst thing that can happen. Yeah, ever, it's, basically. Like, it's so scary, happen, like, dude. Like, 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 right at the end of the combat, there's like one enemy left. You know, you get hit, ah. stunned, oh, faulted. Redo the whole combat room. Especially on the higher difficulties. Because it could take you like two, oh, wow. three minutes to beat a yeah. room, and then and, right at the end of the room, you have to do it again. And that one just teleported while you're skipping a cutscene. Like, yeah. that's, that's just cheap. Yeah. Why, <laughs> why, why are you cheating? This is fortunately the last... Um, Last room with him. Last room of it, but it's like the most terrifying because it is Chimera Scarecrows and Chimera Assaults combined with the faults. Yeah. So you, c I've had instances where I've gotten hit by a Chimera that I was comboing right into a fault, and like that, it's you know, stun locks couldn't have predicted it, and then just like right into a fault. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, hold up. Excuse me. Oh. Cosmic, you're supposed to shoot them to stop them from swinging. Oh, okay. Hold up. Excuse me. Ooh. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, oh dude. <laughs> we did it. We did God. it. We made it. It wasn't even close. God, like, the, yeah? <laughs> no, dude. It's good. The horror block starts early. <laughs> <laughs> A couple days early. All right. So we're going to move on out of uh, the fun house and just, you know, get some, some red orbs, and we're just going to continue on our way into some donations. Once I untangle from my headset. <laughs> Anyways, $25 here from MX Mojo Jojo. Let's hope for some balls this run. Much love, Cosmic. <laughs> it's such a great run to watch. All righty. $25 here from AT. Thank you for your efforts in helping people in need. DMC4 is fire. Much love. Thank you for your donation. All right, so now we're going to get into mission 15 and we're going to get introduced to another new enemy called the Blitz. Now, the Blitz, as Dante, there are a ton of ways to deal with this enemy. Um, like, it has an electric shield around it that you can hit and you can use, like, Royal Guard strats for it and everything, and it's super interesting to interact with, but all that's slow. So we're just going to, like, shoot it a couple of times after you're using a Holy Wander on it and it's going to go down. Uh, after doing like a little desperation attack here. So, so. Certified DMC1 moment. It's true. All right, here we go. Double guns, and now he's dead. See how easy that was? Yeah, there's a lot of, like, and you could do some stuff to fight that, but like, it's just really, really slow. Um, there's actually a lot of sections like that with Dante where it's like, at this point, you have so much money, you can just dump a holy water on your problems. Mm-hmm. And uh, this next room is another like set of Angelos, and we're going to be looking to just kind of kill them. We don't really want to wait for the orb or anything. We just kind of want to take these guys out because they are a nightmare to deal with in this room. I don't know what it is about the enemies in this room specifically that are just so aggressive. Uh, excuse me. They just hate reading. <laughs> I get it. I can't do it either. All right, this guy might be going down, and then we're going to hit this guy. Nice. Good. And we're going to do a little bit of cool movement here. So we're going to come over to this thing, get some more orbs, and then stab this door, and we're in. Smooth. All right. This so. mission uh, also sucks because the checkpoints <laughs> on it are horrendous. <laughs> 
I mean, I'm, the cosmic will be fine, but if you die at like any point in this mission, you go back so far. Yeah, you like, go back. Like three or four combat uh -huh. encounters, like it's really bad. far back. It's super, super bad. Um, so, you know, good luck, Cosmic. Never worried. This is also a room where it's super important to do a mechanic on Gilgamesh, where you can see, like, I'm waiting to time it, and you get, like, a basically an instant rev on Gilgamesh, and that actually helps you do more damage to these enemies, and you get to kill them a lot faster. And if you do, like, the instant straights there, so, like, this is, this is straight right there, yeah, it's, like, it's, like a, punch. it's like a just frame mechanic. You let go yep. at like the perfect time, and it does extra damage. And you can combine that with distortion, like you just did right there, um, to um, basically when he's undoing double trigger in the middle of that attack, the attack hits many times while he's switching bottles. And you can do it going into double trigger and coming out of double trigger. Um, there's a cooldown between when you can switch, so you can only do it really once per attack, but you can do it on anything. So he does it during the just straight, he does it during dive kicks, he does it during real impacts. This whole mission is basically just set up, spam real impact, um, as you're going to see right here. <laughs> Except that Frost set himself up. <laughs> yeah. OK. All right. Excuse me. Appreciate it. Goodbye. Sure, you can. All right. And then we're going to, we would normally go down into the pit there, but we're just like going to not. And then we're just going to go back over to here. Normally, you would have to drop down into the pit and activate a light wheel, but you just don't have to do it with Dante's mobility. It's kind of hard to visualize just how broken something like Distorted Real Impact is. But we're going to have a perfect visual demonstration coming up here as Dante is going to fight the frog boss that Nero fought on Mission 5. Um, but you might not even see it happen because his health bar is going to just evaporate. If all goes well. Yeah, I mean, you know, the frog has to not be the frog. <laughs> so maybe it won't, and this is all just a setup for nothing. But right, this run's going go. pretty good, so I think it'll be fine. Here we go. All right. All right, yeah, here we go. Yeah, all right, now watch this elbow. Uh, oh, oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a tad bit broken. Tad bit. So now, this next mission right here, normally you would have to go through this whole like winding thing, like the winding tunnels that Nero went through on mission six, but they're covered in like poisonous gas. Fortunately, uh, we're gonna grab a couple of extra abilities here. This we're is gonna... the coolest trick in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna grab a couple extra abilities here and we're gonna also buy another holy water. We're good there, all right. And uh, there's no collision on the ceiling here, so we can actually just skip the entire section. Oh, of course. All right, hold up. Run hold it back. Up. We running it back. It's all good. You can miss it like five times, it'll save time. <laughs> That's true. All right, we're going to try this with setup this time. All right. Oh, hold up. All right. Excuse me? All right, good. There we go. Let's now we're go, through the dude. Yep. Man. Gaming is occurring in this stream. And yeah, that just saved about two minutes. So yeah, I don't I don't really have anything else to say there. It's yeah. just like you don't have to deal with this gas anymore. You are now cooking with gas, sir. That's true. That's facts. Basically the way that works is there's that inertia mechanic that I was talking about earlier about preserving your momentum. And he was using this thing called a combat adjudicator, which you normally just beat up so you can get some uh, extra additional health. Um, but what he did is he set it up so that he flung it in the air and then teleported towards it, which built his inertia vertically. And then he had to do a very specific string of abilities so that he could maintain that momentum through the ceiling and then just land on top. Um, but what makes it really hard is that not only do you have to do the inputs right, but you have to time them all correctly so that you maintain the momentum. It's not enough to do the inputs in the correct order. They have to be timed correctly so that you maintain the momentum. Precisely. And that, that skip honestly like really revived this game at one point because Mission 16 was just so like tough to get through and just such a chore with how like much damage the gas would do to you on top of dealing with enemies and just saving that two minutes by doing a really cool skip, you know, brought some people back and it was like, yeah, this, this level's really cool now. This level's gas. <laughs> 
All right, so now what we're going to do, uh, before we head into the boss, I'm going to grab a small little Devil Star here, just in case there's some shenanigans on the next level. It's like right there, it's fine. And, excuse me, thank you. And we're going to do the second to last orb farm in the game. We're just going to grab this right here. If you may have forgotten, this is the area where we fought the first real boss fight as Nero, so you guessed it. The quesadilla comes full circle. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to sacrifice this ability, get back real impact. And we're going to head on in. So now here's Burial, but uh, we're going to get our revenge for how much he messed with me in Mission 2. Two. Not as much damage as the frog, but like, you can spam it. There we go. Now he's dead. <laughs> he didn't get to do a thing. Man didn't get to play the video game. Not at all. And that should be, that's like a really easy no damage, so we just got a little bit extra money there. Um, this next mission is probably the most, it, this is probably the most hectic of the, uh, like the Dante missions. There's a lot of fights to do that are all like pretty hectic and require some adaptation, um, as well as a really hard boss fight. And terrible checkpoints once again. <laughs> so don't die. And we're going to grab two Holy Waters to help us out here. Just the classic mid-2000s checkpoints. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? You want to do the whole mission again. Oh, okay. Here you go. Here you are. I know you were about to beat the final boss, but back to mission one. And uh, this is actually going to be the last um, back formation. To <laughs> back to salad. Back to salad, dude. <laughs> the deep lore. <laughs> All right. This is actually going to be the last formation of, um, like, Triple Angelos that we're going to deal with as well. So I think I'm gonna like actually just do something cool. If, hopefully I'm gonna I'm gonna try for the orb here. Normally you wouldn't, but there's a cool strat you can do with it. So we're gonna do it. If this guy will cooperate. Are you gonna do that move? I'm gonna do that move. Oh, sick. All right. Let come on guys. Let work with me here. So with this new weapon called Lucifer. Dante can throw a rose out, and uh, it can, oh. you know, oh my goodness. We don't talk about it. Move on. We're not going to talk about Move it. Move on. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> not anymore. What new weapon? We're not using it. Never happens. All right. But yeah, we got a new weapon, which in this instance just makes it harder to ha use the weapons you want to use, because now you have to press the button one more time. Can you guys... I should have never given you all the opportunity to play the game. We also got an, uh, another new gun. It's literally Pandora's box. Unfortunately, it couldn't find an arrangement that was useful. So it's not used, except for like one point in the run. All right. So we have a, like time for a couple of donations while we do this next fight. It's kind of hectic. All righty. Well, two very generous donations of $500 each kicked us right over 115000 total. Fantastic there. One was from Chris B. with no message, and the other was from Never Walker Alone that simply says, Let's go! Let's go? Let's go. Here's a $50 donation from Dahaka2843. I want to donate every time this hell of the game happens, and I missed Minish Cap, so the devil may cry about it, but better late than never. SGDQ hype! 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 25 dollar donation here from Wody B. Always love seeing a cosmic run. Also, major props to one of the best speedrunning mentors I know. Thanks for always pushing me to keep moving forward. Oh, and Wody just wants you to know, you are cool. You're pretty cool too, You're pretty Wody. Cool. You're pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty facts cool. though. Like, if you just want to learn a random hack and slash on the PlayStation 2, <laughs> call this man up. Yo, he'll give you a tutorial and everything. All right. And then we mean like any random hack and slash on the PS2. <laughs> this man runs Ghost Rider on the PS2, right? That or game slaps, dude. <laughs> that game is great. That's the real Devil May Cry 2 right there. Yep. All right, so now we're going to wait for these guys to pop up. And then we're going to set up right here. Spend some money, make your problems go away. Yeah. 
You just gave the dog the gap. That was brutal. Hit him with the 10 strings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tekken 8 is coming out. So. Oh, yeah. All right, so now we're going to grab a little bit extra double trigger over here. And this is the actual, like, last normal fight with enemies that we're going to do as Dante. And after this is the hardest boss okay. in the game. To One get a quick kill on, at least. Yeah, that's true. All right. Excuse me? Oh, my goodness. All right, you, you'll do. Thank you. So we talked about uh, distortion, and we also talked about just frames. But you can also do them both on top of each other to do insane damage, which is what he's going to be trying to do multiple times in a row to be able to get the quick kill on the boss. All right, we're going to take this guy out. I'm going to actually play this a little safe. Keep the devil trigger up here. Normally, you would you would distort a real impact that guy, but I want full devil trigger for this. So, all right, here we go. Excuse you? He got trolled. What? He ran away, dude. He was afraid. Why did he not get stuck? All right, whatever, dude. Things Where? are gonna get a little weird now. Things are gonna get a little weird. Oh, nice recovery. Okay. All right. So Dante has some pretty insane attacks that are really good at doing massive damage, but they're really, really slow to wind up and don't hit very far. So instead, he's going to do uh, what I do every time I play this game and just spam ecstasy. Or that's a uh, pinup, actually. Solid backup. Okay, now he's done. All right, that didn't good help. Save, good save, good but... save. <clears throat> yeah, he's supposed to stun there when he gets uppercutted, and then he just didn't. So we had to, we had to bust out the pins on him. So. The game said no. We had to get down to brass tacks. All right, so now we're gonna fight against a boss that's kind of more of a puzzle, and this is the last mission that we'll do with Dante in the game, and it's gonna start off here by shooting two lasers into its chest. And then we're going to T-Pose. There we go. And we're going to destroy these crystals all over its body. This is the only time we're going to see the, the Katana in the run. So, bye-bye. Man, Dante hates body jewelry. And then, all right, sick. Cool. We're going to take that out. And then we're going to take one last one out over here. And it's going to initiate the second phase. All right, and then on this platform, we're going to kind of stand near the back because this is going to manipulate the boss slightly in order to do these this double attack here. All right, and then, cool. And then we're going to take out the two crystals here, and that's going to push it to phase three, which is a phase away from where it actually has a health bar. And it's going to do this big laser attack. We're just going to kind of jump over these platforms uh, onto the final platform where we're going to do the kill strat. This kill strat's really hard. It's also super cool. Um, and it just shows off how broken the sort of real impact is. Yep. All right, here we go. He's dead. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're done with Dante, and we got two missions left as Nero. Uh, and in true Devil May Cry fashion, uh, in Capcom fashion, we've got a boss rush at the uh, the very end of the game, where we're going to fight all of the bosses for the third time, except not, for Kreda. Not the good ones, though. I mean, well, okay, the window cool. is not back. That's true. He's not back. Uh, no. But you know, the other ones. I wish you just fought Credo like eight times instead. That'd be great. I would love that. Every successful Credo attempt, you fight more <laughs> Credos at once. All right. So now we're going to have to play the dice game again here. And uh, it's going to be like a little bit of mini dice games, but... All right. 
These ones are cool because they're like have setups. A lot of them you can just snatch instantly and you go right to the next boss. This fight is like supposed to represent Credo because Credo dies in the story. But we don't have to fight Credo anymore. So rip. we're gonna fight Burial a third time, and this is gonna be the real revenge for uh, mission two. Alright, here we go. So like Showdown, there's also a different move that you can only do in DT called uh, Maximum Bet, which he's doing right here. Big charge rate, charged range projectile into a Showdown to uh, take Burial's lunch money. And then we should be finishing him off here. Cosmic also bought an ability called Max Act, which um, adds an additional mechanic to his Exceed. Where if he hits the timing on the exceed even more perfectly, I don't know the frames, but one it charges frames. one or two frames. Yep. Then it charges all three swings of exceed instantly, um, and so like a huge damage output is spamming caliber at level three exceed and then hitting the timing again. Excuse you. Okay, there we go. All right, we're gonna wait for a second here. I don't trust this guy. Frog moment. Okay, well, can we get it? No. Okay. No. Oh, no. Oh, God. Yeah, here we go. So this is what we didn't see on Mission 4, was this sort of, like, dark phase that he goes into. The Mission 19 Frog is very volatile in terms of just kind of what he can give you. So normally, you would get, like, a setup into double max bet, and then you would kill him from there. But we're going to settle with this, so there he goes. And now we're going to move on to fight a kid. Now I'm going to make sure that I grab these. And then we're going to immediately snatch this die. And we're going to move into Echidna. And Echidna in this level, you can actually manipulate by doing level 3 caliber into a, a third level charge shot. And then she'll immediately go up into the flower form here. Dude, the arrow just does so much damage compared to Dante. It's crazy. Excuse me. There we go. Cool. Then we're going to pull this out again. Fun fact about this, it is actually capped. We were very disappointed to learn that. We were just hoping to bust out the WD-40 and infinite scroll mouse and just kill the boss instantly, but you can only match it so fast, unfortunately. Come on. All right, so now we've got... And I'm doing these extra taunts after certain bosses in order to get extra devil trigger from... Uh, their death animations, or in Echidna's case, that little creature that she spawns with her. And now we're going to move on to Agnes. This is going to be the last fight of this level. And we just kind of want to whack away at him. No window fight in the boss rush, unfortunately. Excuse me, sir. Can you come here, doggo? Thank you. That animation is amazing. Do uh, Nero grabs the dog and then shoots it like a rocket launcher and then slams it at the ground. That in and of itself should be enough for you to buy this game. Play. And then here is going to be the final grab on Agnes. And he's gone. So that's going to wrap up that mission. And we're going to be heading into final boss territory here. And final boss is actually going to be Sanctus, who has kidnapped Nero's um, girlfriend, Kyrie. And he, we, he now wields the power of the sword Sparta, which is Dante's father. And the Order of the Sword worships Dante's father, who is a demon, as a sort of god. And so they wish to have the power of Sparta through the sword. Um, but Nero's now going to put a stop to all that. So we got to beat up an old man one more time, <laughs> is what you're saying. I'm here for it. Precisely. How many times do we have to teach you this <laughs> lesson, old man? <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, there's going to be two phases here, ideally. Let's get to it. Time is not after he kills this boss, by the way. There is a, a thing right afterwards. Whatever. That's fine. The game did not want to give me showdown there, so... The showdown is actually a double input. You have to use, like, sword and gun at the same time. Um, 
and it's pretty tight actually, so it's pretty easy to miss. And in this fight, he's looking to set him up so he can do a showdown into a, into a big animation. Um, he does that twice, hopefully. Paired with the Holy Water. He's gonna hit him with another Aura. Aura! Ooh, 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 ooh. It's coming from the wrong guy in this game, but <laughs> the sounds are still made. All right, now he's gonna uh, teleport behind us. We're gonna use a Holy Water here. This game into is so one weird. last showdown. And then for one final Aura, boss down. And time will be coming up soon. All right, here we go. You got to show down the screen. It's DMC4 <laughs> tradition. Every PB. All right, one, two, and time. Now I know what this hand was made for. Beating up old men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, my name is D Cosmic, and this has been Devil May Cry 4. This man was made for sending guys like you back to hell. Um, I love this run. Um, I am so glad that I got to show it at GDQ. Um, it is in like my top three runs of all time between DMC5, this game, and Vanquish. And I've been, I've been waiting to get a shot at this for a while. So uh, thank you so much, Maxi and Waifu, for coming with me on this journey. Thank you so much. Uh, to GDQ for having us. Um, shout outs to Doctors Without Borders for all that they do, and thank you to the crowd and the host for uh, everything, as well as the producers and everybody. You were fantastic. Um, and I guess now, now I get to, yeah, I mean, shout outs to the Devil May Cry community. Um, Smash Villain, who is a huge supporter of mine, he's been there since like day one of me as affiliate. Um, the, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people that are that are just great that uh, I want you to know that you're pretty cool and uh, and great and stylish. So that's really it for me. If you guys don't have anything or... No, just thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, big shout out. Go follow DE Cosmic. Um, he does speedruns of all of stuff. Of <laughs> a lot of stuff, yeah. Any PS2 action game you want to see, I'm sure he'll take a crack at it at least. And also Absolutely. he's very good at Devil May Cry, all of the games, even the one I don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's awesome. And follow Maxi Lobes. Follow does a Maxi, bunch of speed yeah, runs. Follow Waifu. I do a bunch of speed runs too. That's what this event is about, actually. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, oh, whoa. Um, and, but yeah, shout outs to Devil May Cry speedrunning community. Shout outs to Maxi and Cosmic for building it from super small, humble beginnings to now like almost every game being shown off at big events and so optimized. And it's cool to see the everyone in the Discord being all active and all this stuff. Shout out to Loner Hero. Shout out to Loner Hero. Loner, Loner, dude. One day, Loner. One DMC2, day. DMC2, Loner Hero. It'll, hear It'll happen. DMC2. Uh, that is it from us, though, I believe. So thank you so much again, GDQ, for having us. And uh, that'll be it. Hell yeah. Woohoo! Alrighty, I love the concept of a sword that you rev like an engine. It's the most ridiculous thing in a video game, and I love every moment of it. We had a $25 donation here from Esol that simply said, thank you for representing the DMC community. And a $25 donation from Thrillhouse that said, because I have to do it, loving this Devil May Cry 4 run featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Alrighty, with that meme out of the way, we're going to take a quick break here. We will be back.
So I don't know how many of you remember during the setup for Devil May Cry. I made a comment about Korox due to a donation, and several of you had very strong opinions that you felt the need to donate to tell me, so the bait worked. I'm going to share a couple of them real quick. This first one, I'm not going to be ready for it. $25 here from Miffed Korok. <laughs> Yahaha! Ha, you found these fists, Zenadir. <laughs> 25 Korok seats towards runner's choice. Bye bye I've never felt so awkwardly threatened in my life. Uh, just so we're aware, the runner's choice uh, was determined for that game. Let me pull it up here. It's specifically for the Peggle incentives. Don't worry, it's going towards that. And also... Please don't make me feel uncomfortable like that again. I don't need these fists, Miss, Miffed Korok, but thank you for the donation. We also had $20 from Maybe Your Pie, specifically said to plenty of other Koroks in Hyrule, yeah, to be pushed off cliffs. We had $5 here from Mint Kuro that says, Koroks are friends. Don't you dare disrespect my boy Makar like that. Makar is fine. The rest I'm not a big fan of, but Makar plays an instrument like an absolute champion, so... Makar is from my childhood. Makar is truly shaped like a friend. I will give you points on that one. With that, that's been my time on the mic tonight. It's been fantastic day one of GDQ, and I'll be back again on the final day. Until then, taking over the mic will be the King's Pride, but real quick, we do have a prize segment. Take it away.